Fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. The Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now at 865-243-8255. That's 243-TALK. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Welcome back to the Patrick Riggins Show. Your lighthouse of freedom and liberty through the fog of government tyrannical propaganda. <laughs> Otherwise known as the evening news. <laughs> Once again, we had a presidential debate this week. This time it took a town hall format, but the candidates were not really ever asked any real hard questions. Personally, I refuse to watch these massive wastes of time because I already know what I need to know about the latest two contestants on Presidential Survivor, United States Edition. One of the big reasons I hate watching the debates is the the long line of serfs, these helpless sheep who show up asking how the president is going to help them. What is he going to do to fix this person's situation? Now, as I said, I don't watch the debates, but I'm going to play a few clips of the questions that were asked by the working slaves to the two guys vying to be their master. The reason I don't play the answers is because well, I don't want to hear what these two clowns have to say about further socializing my beloved country. The other reason is that I'm going to answer them, so you'll know how the candidates should have replied had either one of them been interested in freedom and liberty. And they started off with, this was the first little whining question. I want to turn to a first-time voter, uh, Jeremy Epstein, who has a question for you. Mr. President, Governor Romney, as a 20-year-old college student, all I hear from professors, neighbors, and others is that when I graduate, I will have little chance to get employment. Can, what can you say to reassure me, but more importantly, my parents, that I will be able to sufficiently support myself after I graduate? Well, let's see. First off, stop looking to the government to take care of you. Depend on yourself for once. I know this is hard because, more than likely, this student is receiving government grants and or government loans to attend college, so he is already being primed for a life of looking to government for answers. Now, how can he correct this? Easy. Stop taking government aid. Now, you're probably going to have to get a job while you're in college, and you might not have as free, much free time anymore. But you will be ridding yourself of this painful addiction that you're starting to government handouts. Wish to be honest, are not government handouts, but rather the redistribution of the theft of assets from your fellow citizens. Unfortunately, a lot of people in this country don't have any problem with that, with the possession of stolen property, stolen at the point of a gun from other citizens. Because, hey, screw them, I have to get what I can get, right? Your Energy Secretary, Stephen Chu, has now been on record three times stating it's not policy of his department to help lower gas prices. Do you agree with Secretary Chu that this is not the job of the Energy Department? My response to this question would be, I would guess by asking this question, you believe it is the job of the Energy Department to help lower gas prices, correct? Well, you aren't going to have to worry about that anymore. One of the first things I'm going to do is eliminate the energy department, along with a bunch of other wasteful departments who have no use other than to put a bunch of self-righteous, over-educated bureaucrats in charge of the American people. And to answer your question, no, it is not the government's job to be meddling in industry, in any industry, and trying to regulate pricing. Next question. In what new ways do you intend to rectify the inequalities in the workplace, specifically regarding females making only 72% of what their male counterparts earn? <laughs> now, this is why I could never run for public office, because my first question to this ignorant question being asked by an obviously just as clueless person would be something along the lines of, well, ma'am, my plan is to ban women from the workplace altogether. If they cannot make as much as a man make as men make, then obviously we don't need them working there. I mean, 
if the business really needed them, they would pay them better to stay, right? It's only common sense. And, of course, that first cynical answer would be the one played over and over on all the news shows for that week. Actually, that might be a good thing because it would give the talking heads something to scream about and maybe boost their already dismal ratings. Heck, it might even double MSNBC's audience, which I think would make it around 175 people or so. That's too much credit. Yeah, Tori says that's too much credit. Although I think really half of those viewers are probably elderly who don't realize they are not on the Andy Griffith channel. <laughs> but, uh, but hey, a viewer is a viewer. Right? They'll take all they can get. <laughs> and the other half are the ones that can't figure out how to change the channel. Yeah, exactly. It's stuck on there. <laughs> but back to the question. And I'm sure you can guess my answer. Ma'am, it is none of the government's business how much women are paid in the private sector. None. Whatever you can get paid, grab it. If one company won't pay you an amount you would consider worthy of your talents and abilities... Jump ship and go to one that will. If you are as good at your job as you think you are, then you should not have any problem with companies fighting over each other to hire you. If they aren't doing that, and you aren't getting paid what you think you are worth, then maybe it is time to do a little honest, and note I said honest, self-evaluation to determine if you need more education, more skills, or you might just need more work experience to improve on what you already know. Now, the key part in that equation is the word honest self-evaluation. And if you aren't capable of that, or you still cannot come up with a reason, there is a simple way to find out. Go to your boss and ask. Tell him or her why you feel you deserve a pay raise. And if they don't agree, then ask what you need to do to become more valuable to the company and thus deserving of a raise in their eyes. But, who knows, that, that would involve work. And maybe even a little rejection if the answer wasn't one you wanted to hear. So, it is just much, much easier to get the government to make your employer give you a raise, whether you deserve it or not. Hey, it works for the unions, right? So, why not you? Next question. The outsourcing of American jobs overseas has taken a toll on our economy. What plans do you have to put back and keep jobs here in the United States? Naturally, the first question you should ask this person is, do they enjoy being able to go to Walmart, Walmart or any electronic store and buy a television with the newest, latest, and greatest technology for under $200? I do. Yeah, exactly. Tori enjoys it. You enjoy buying all sorts of electronics, don't you? Yes. Cheaper prices. Yes. It is outsourced manufacturing that allows this. No. Yes, that dirty little secret. Because of government regulations and the refusal of Americans to work for lower pay than their government check, we cannot produce these types of things in America cheaper than they can outside the country. Personally, I'm glad a majority of Americans can enjoy a higher class of living because of imported goods. More people probably own a flat-screen TV now than ever before. We throw away all kinds of things in this country that our grandparents would have held on to way beyond its useful life. And why do we do that? Because the items are very inexpensive. It isn't a wise use of money to fix something if you can buy something new for the same price. Now, take your car, for instance. If it stops working, you take it to the shop and get it fixed. Why? Because it is too expensive just to go buy another one. If your TV stops working, you throw it away and get a new one. If your house needs painting, do you just go buy another one with new paint on it? Well, of course not. You paint the one you have. If you break the case or screen on your cell phone, you go get a new one. Heck, if you're a U.S. cellular down the street here, you'll probably have enough upgrade points to get a better one anyway. The point is... Government should not be interfering in business decisions. In fact, if the government would drop all these burden, burdensome uh, regulations we have, we would have a substantially better business-friendly environment, and more of them would opt to stay in the country. When you regulate things, they tend to become scarce. When you allow freedom and a chance to prosper, you get more of whatever it is you're freeing. 
and usually a better quality as well. Government's not interested in quality, though. And, yeah, I've got enough time. I'll tell this quick story here. I stopped by one of our county clerk's offices to renew my driver's license. The hour is listed as being open until 4.30 p.m., but they stopped taking applications at 4. Supposedly, so they'll have a chance to get everyone lined up before closing time. So I walk into the office and ask about renewing my license. The guy behind the counter tells me they stopped taking applications at 4. Well, he and I both look up at the clock, and it says 10 minutes till. I said, hey, your clock says I have 10 minutes. And of course, his lame excuse was, well, it runs a little slow. And we have a lot of people to get to before 4.30. Now, let's contrast this with a private business. A while back, I was finishing up a little DIY project one night and ran a little short of this particular type of nail I had to use. Now, I didn't have any of these things. They are ceramic coated, or not ceramic, but they were cement coated so they wouldn't rust and everything. So... I had to get some more real quick, so I ran over to Home Depot, but get there after they had locked the doors. I turn around, start to walk back to my car. The manager of the store opens the door, yells to me to come back over, and he asks what I need to get. I said, well, I need this particular box of nails that I had to have because I had to finish this project, and I didn't have the correct ones. Well, as I stood up at the front, he runs to the hardware area gets the box of nails, brought it back up to where I was standing. Mind you, this is only about a $3 box of nails. But now we ran into the problem. The, the cash register drawers has already been pulled, so he had no way to ring anything up. So I figured he'd have to go back to the back of the store, get a cash drawer, bring it up front, restart the register just for this $3 sale. Instead, he hands me the box and tells me to not worry about it. Where do you think I shop now? That is a difference in private business and government. Government doesn't care if you're satisfied. Government, government doesn't care if you're hurt by something it does. Government doesn't care if it puts you out of business. Government is a monopoly with guns. You don't like it? Tough. They don't allow competing governments in this country. And if you try and set one up, they'll be bringing those guns and making sure you or anyone else, for that matter, don't ever try it again. So we're up on the bottom of the hour here at the Patrick Riggins Show. We have a couple messages. We'll come back with a bunch more. Be sure and join us. Like I said, about two or three minutes. Listen to these messages. These are the guys that help keep us on the air. This is Patrick Riggins. We'll be back.